Welcome everybody, welcome to the channel. Today we're talking about the clean shot from Graco and a copy version. I'll use that term loosely. Don't want to be incriminated and slanderous um, libel actions against me because I've said it's a copy. But I have bought, in effect, a Graco clean shot off Amazon for 50 quid-ish. Now, if you don't know what they are, they're a piece of apparatus you put on your spray gun to eliminate the spits that you might have found have happened when you've been spraying. That you add an extension bar like this, you've started spraying, and a little tail of paint comes out after you've released, shut off the trigger. Does that make sense? You've probably seen it. You've been spraying a ceiling, you've had an extension bar on thinking, oh, I can walk around, don't need any steps. And what's happened? You've released your trigger, you've shut off, and you get a bit of a <laughs> spit out of paint out the end of your gun. Now, the clean shot eliminates that. And how does it do that, Phil? You're saying, how does it do it? There's some special mechanism in there that helps stop the pressure in that pipe coming out the spray guard, the spray tip at the end. And it's all regulated by that, I'm going to call it a turning knob. This turning, term, turning, turning, turning knob. If it's turned all the way out, that is giving you free flow. I'm going to call it free flow. That's allowing the paint to go through like it would do through your ordinary setup of a gun and an extension bar. If you start turning it in and dialing it in and you're tweaking it, you are altering the settings in that piece of aluminium, metal, whatever it is, to help stop the pressure of the paint from your airless sprayer making a spit coming out the, out the end. It'll all be clear when I show you a demonstration. But this tweaked in, dialed in, will eliminate and stop that bit of a spit you get when you've been spraying. Clever, clever stuff. A few tips and tricks I'm going to say to you. Have a set of these with you because that turning knob can get very tight. Sometimes it's tight because you've got a blockage and if you find you can't move it, you can't spray anything, you can't move the handle, it's not doing anything, turn your machine off, release the pressure from the spray pipe, you know, the paint pipe, put it into prime, let the pressure from the machine go pumping back into your hopper or your tub of paint and then release all this, dial that out, alter it, make sure you get the paint flow coming again when you turn it back on. It'll make it'll all come clear when I talk to you uh, with a proper sprayer on the go in a moment. Right, this is the copy version. Looks exactly the same, sort of. See that? Very similar. They've both got swivel ends. You can both move, you can move them both about like so. And they've both got that knob that you can dial in or dial out. This is dialing out, that's full full flow. And if you dial it in, turning it in, that would reduce the pressure in there to stop that spit. Hopefully, does it work? We will find out. So I'm just gonna show you my setup down here. I'll blend out, blend it back in. This is my bad boy. I've got a nice, I love the word nice, don't I? Got a nice contract spray gun there. I've got a, a good 12 inch spray extension bar with, for the purpose of this video, a 310 fine finish tip, which is there. The reason I'm using a fine finish tip is because I've got some paint that is satin finish. I've thinned it down and I want to just practice with that. It's some excess paint I've got from a job, but, this will give you a good example of how it spits when you do your spraying. Now, I have got my mask for the purpose of the video because I'm going to be talking to you. I won't put the mask on. It is, it is here. So please don't say I don't have a mask. I do have a mask. If I was doing more spraying on this job for actually showing you a complete job, I would have the mask on. But for this purpose of this, I am not. I've got the sprayer 
which is a GX FF setup outside with a hopper. I've thinned the paint to a consistency that when you mix it, it runs back in. I will bring the camera to the hopper and the sprayer later. You'll see that on the video. I've got it going through a vegetable bag from Lidl. So we're straining the paint. The paint's a nice consistency. I have tried it. I have flushed it through so I know it all works and I'm ready to spray. I'm going to release the protective guard there. I'm going to get my slot bucket and make sure it sprays through. And you're asking me what pressure I'm spraying at. For the purpose of this, I'm spraying around about the 15, 1600 PSI. Now, if you get your consistency right of paint, if you get your spray tip right, you could probably reduce that down to about 1200 to 1000. But for the purpose of this video, I'm happy to spray round at that pressure because it's going to give me the demonstration that I'm needing. Just got my slot bucket. I know that sprays nicely. The pressure's just right. That is a 12 inch extension bar. So I'm going to stand behind the camera more so I can actually show you on a bit of Cortex sheet how the spits form. Now I'm going to say to you, when you spray, you're roughly spraying it about 12 inches, which is really that sort of distance away from the surface. Back to basics, move too quickly. You're not going to put enough paint on. Move too slowly you're going to be putting too much paint on. So gauge it that you get the right pressure, the right, the right fan pattern, the right spray consistency that you can move nicely with control over the surface. For the purpose of this video, I work quite quickly. I don't want loads of overspray in the air because clearly I've not got my mask on. It's a bit of a slot bucket. Right, release the trigger so I'm good to go. I'm going to stand just off camera. I've got the board there. And you'll see, I'm going to hold it in one spot. Did you see that? Right, let's... Can you see that bit of a tail coming there? That is the spits. Let's bring you in. You've got a spit. Let's do it again. Up. Just there. So this is a nice amount of paint that's going on. It is giving me a little bit of a spit. I'm gonna just swap now to the Graco clean shot. I'm gonna turn the machine off, release the pressure from here because I am taking off that tip guard and putting that clean shot on the end, and I will show you the difference that you will get. Right, I'm back, I've just swapped it over. Now I've put it onto full flow. Let's call it full flow. That, that regulating knob at the end is on full open now. So this will react like using your full gun, you're not restricting it. Now, for the purpose of the video again, no mask. I'm just gonna do it on the side. I'm turning my gun that way around. I'm gonna hold it about 12 inches again. Can you see that tail? There's that tail there. Now, if I put your lock on your guard, on your handle. Now, if I get my grips, let's, I'll just tweak that turn it in, call it dialing it in. I'm just going to turn it in a bit more and see if we can get those tails gone. Do you know what? Next to nothing on there. Nothing at all. Can you see that? There is no tail on there whatsoever. And that is with me just turning that, I'll say quarter of a turn, fraction of a turn. Now, if you over tighten it, you will shut it off and you'll probably find it in effect blocks. You won't get any paint out of it. If that happens, turn your machine off, release your pressure, put it into prime, turn that knob back out, get it back onto full flow, make sure paint's coming out your needle, 
reverse that needle around just in case the tape needle, <laughs> thinking of HBLP, reverse that tip around to make sure it's not blocked, but just alter it accordingly. But for me, that is spraying perfect. If this was spraying emulsion, that has reduced and stopped and eliminated that tail there. Whereas on these, got some runs on here now, too much paint, too thin a paint. Um, I can see where the tails have been. So for all intents purposes, that clean shot is worth its weight in gold for eliminating all that. Now I'm gonna strip that back off. I'm gonna to go to the copy version and see if I get the same results. So bear with me. So I'm back. I've got the same setup with the copy version. I'm dialing that all the way out so you can see it on full flow and we should get a tail. I'll do it just there. We should get a tail from it. Pressure's exactly the same. I've not altered anything. It's still running around that yeah, 1500 might be just a bit lower than that. So let's see what we are at that. I'm coming down this side. You see that tail there? See that tail there? Right, put my lock on my handle again. I'm just gonna turn it in, dial it in. Now this turns a lot easier because it is brand new and there's a lot less pressure gunk around it. I'm turning it as far as I possibly can. Let me just try it in my slot bucket, make sure something comes out. Right, I'm gonna press it, nothing is coming out. I've turned it too far. So what I'm gonna do, put my handle lock back on, I'm gonna pull it back, spitted. I've pulled it back, we're going full flow again, full flow. Now I'm turning it in about halfway. Let me get my slot bucket, see if it sprays. That is spraying. Now that is halfway through. Sorry, that's spraying. It's about halfway dialed in. Right, let's just see if I can get a tail or there's no tail. We might need to tweak it in a bit more. Where should we go? Can we go here? See that tail? Right, we need to come in a bit more. So this is where the dialing in needs to be dialed in a little bit more. I'm going as far as I can possibly go. It won't spray, so I've got it opened out again. Let's see what we get. We're still getting a tail. Let's just try a little bit more. Still a tail. A little bit more. Nothing's coming out. Let's pull it back a little bit. Tailing. Is it working? Right, I'm going to get rid of the sheet, scan another one out. Right, back with another Cortex sheet, and let's just see if we can get this copy not spitting. I'm going to say to you, comments below if you've bought one of these and you've got success with it. I'm Don't forget, like I say, these swivel, so depending on the angle of the work you're doing, you can alter it round. But let's just start in this corner here. Bit of a tail. Now I'm gonna see if I can reduce the pressure down. It's about 1200. Let's see if we can go again. Still a tail. You see it? Dialing it in a little bit more. 
still a tail. I'm about 12 inches away from the surface. Let's go a bit closer. See how much paint build up you get. Still a bit of a tail. Let's just tweak it in one more time. Nothing. Just got to pull it back out again. Still, pull it back out again. It's better, but it's not as good as the proper clean shot. I'm getting a tail each time. Let's go one more time and I'm just gonna go a fraction of a turn. Still there, fraction of a turn again. Come back out. Now, I'm gonna give that up now. I'm not getting the results I want from it. Just to prove a point, I'm gonna go back to the other genuine and let's just see if we can do that side with the same setup, same paint, same spray tip, same extension bar. And if we can see we don't get a tail, we know you've got to go for the real thing, haven't you? No compromise. Back to the original. Let's just see if we get uh, a tail on this and just tweak it accordingly. I'll go with the side. No tail. No tail whatsoever. So clearly I've got no tails on these, which makes me think that you're getting what you pay for. Now, just to prove a point that this is a 310 spray tip, the paint's a little bit thinner. To be fair, I could poss possibly drop down to a 308, 208, because the orifice size is a little bit smaller, which would be geared up for thinner paint. But to be fair, for the purpose of the video, this has proved to me whether I get a tail or not. Now let's get Doris the door with a nice light coat and that will sort me out for videos in the future. But no tails off the original. Have you bought one of these copies off Amazon? Have you had success with it or have I just got a duff one? I can't send it back because I've had it too long. But thankfully I have got an original that I've had years and it's still working fine. Right, what I've done, I've gone to a short bar because I'm spreading a bit close. Doris has been rubbed down and dusted off. I'm just going to coat Doris up with this. It's Everall Aqua 40. Everall Aqua 40. And I'm using the original clean shot on an extension bar, which is what? Four inch. It might be six inch. And um, let's just see how we go. You can spray your woodwork with these clean shots. It's also very handy because it is a swivel end. And again, my mask is there. I've got the door open. I'm going to be seconds doing this. It's purposes for this video. When you're spraying doors, you don't spray a door like you do. You don't spray a door like you do painting going like that. What do you do? You go top to bottom. I'm just going to slightly angle the clean shot because when it gets to the bottom, I can go back up. So top to bottom. Twelve inches away. So as easy as that. Spray makes sense. Let's have a conclusion. Clearly the original is the real deal. Quite happy with that. Comes with a price tag, 120 pounds. A 50 quid copy, I'm at 50 quid copy off Amazon. 
Does it work? It might do for you. It's not worked for me. And I will also say to you, while I was just testing and flushing out my spray equipment, making sure everything ran through, I did struggle sometimes getting water through it. It was as if it had like seized up inside. It did start working again. And as you see with the demonstration, we have actually been spraying with it, but what we've not got is the control to actually shut off using that knob at the end to get rid of that tail. Go back to the original, no problem. All the same setup, two different products. Do you get what you pay for? I think you do. It might work, it might not, but you pay for. This has worked, this is the original, this is the real deal. You copy, I think you'd be spending a bit of time tweaking it to try and get it to work and find it doesn't work. If you've had it working, great. But at the back of my mind, I'd be thinking, is it gonna act up on me? I've had this one for years, not had any problems with it whatsoever. But I think having the copy, yeah, it might just give me a little bit of a headache and a bit of grief if it doesn't work as I want to. And clearly, if it's giving me a tail, particularly on woodwork or doing a ceiling, I don't want to know. Watch the videos at the end. Thank you very much for listening. Bit of a long-winded one, but hope I've explained what a clean shot is, what a cop is like, and where we're sitting. Don't forget, if you do want to purchase one to try yourself, that Amazon link is below, and it's in my Amazon storefront. Looking good. See you on the next one.